the externality problems can be solved through negotiation and the mutual understanding between the polluter and the victim so that the problem can be solved by through negotiation system that no negotiation system does not have any transaction cost that is what we have discussed in the last class so in continuation in continuation with the a course theorem we are going to analyze how we can apply this theory the application of course theory through the property rights model so the course is also say, uh, saying uh, we have two theorems uh, we have two ideas the uh, first idea is we can uh, the we can solve the externality problem and uh, enhance the efficiency uh, either it is a private goods or the public good or the common good we can increase the efficiency by uh, uh, solving the externality problem and market failure uh, by negotiation between the two parties in case if the two parties are not accepting for the any kind of negotiation or it may lead to any transaction cost or any one party is not uh, accepting the uh, negotiation in case of uh, uh, the problem of a transaction cost or the problem of inefficiency or the problem of market structure uh, i mean market failure uh, so one party is not uh, willing to accept for negotiation then we have to go for the second second idea that the government intervention what government will do government they have they don't have any negotiation policies they have the policies such as rules and regulations so they will follow the rules and regulations according to the regulations of the government what they will say uh, so if the uh, uh, pollution is caused by any individual that individual has to bear the marginal social cost or the cost social cost which is incurred due to the damage occurred for the environment or the damage occurred to the uh, third parties or the externalities incurred for the third party or to the society so that is a direct uh, uh, so, uh, solving measure so that the polluter has to bear the cost otherwise the government uh, if it is not directly happens the government will also have the policies of penalization for the environmental damage and the government will also have the policies such as imposing taxes like uh, the externality taxes and welfare measures tax welfare measures uh, taxes they will impose on the polluter so that the money or the damage value has been collected from the uh, the polluter uh, or from the polluter so this is the one theory is a negotiation second theory is a government law so now we are going to apply this property rights uh, into the course theorem what is this property rights first we have to understand what is the difference difference between the general meaning of property rights and uh, the environmental uh, 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 dimension of property rights in general what how what we think the property rights means when we when i invent something when i uh, uh, when my property is been Uh, is being uh, promoted or invented by me that has to be protected that rights has to be with me like that the environmental property rights which consist of the properties having some damages due to the externalities because of the damages uh, done by the damages has happened not by me or it is not Uh, incurred by me but it is incurred by some other person that because of the externality problem my property value 
or my property has damage so the loss of the damage of my property that we require to we are right to have uh, either it may be a private or it may be a public or it may be a common we are right to have the compensation that is called as the property rights in environment i once again repeat uh, the property right how we have to view in this analysis uh, the uh, either it is a private property well, most commonly we use the private property for analysis suppose if it is a private property the private property has some values that values has been damaged or depreciated or it may be affected due to the externality an externality is happened due to the, the the third party's production or consumption and mostly for the analysis we'll use the production concept so that um, production of one uh, common uh, individual will affect the the third person and third person property value will be depreciated or the the damage of uh, 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 of certain property or assets is depleted due to this economic activity of the other person this is the general meaning of this uh, uh, property rights now we are going to apply uh, this post theorem Uh, our first theorem is there no first theorem and second theorem first theorem which talks about uh, the mutual understanding between the pollutant and the third party and the second theorem which talks about the uh, the the intervention of the government and the first theorem we don't have any government intervention fine uh, as uh, till this uh, you're following with me students till this clear Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Fine. So, in moving with this direction, we are going to explain the the application of post theorem into a certain uh, externality issue. So, externality issue. We are going to solve this externality issue by applying the post theorem uh, as. Uh, Uh, uh it has certain certain strong assumptions uh without that we could not able to apply the post theorem uh, first one it assumes that the number of contracting parties should be very small that means if we have so much of uh, one individual uh, making externalities for many individuals some a b c d some 100 people are there because of this one individual 100 people are becomes a victim of this externality then we could not able to operate or we could not able to apply this theory of mutual understanding in that particular aspect the second theorem is possible to apply because for one party between two parties it is easier for negotiation for if it is more than two parties or if it is number of parties are very high like even two three parties also we can manage to go for the negotiation but if it is then the size the uh, the the externality size is more then it is difficult for the mutual understanding because some people they may accept for uh, uh, negotiation some individuals they will not come for uh, accept for negotiation some people they will ask for more compensation some people will have ask for lesser compensation some people the damage may be higher some people the damage will be lesser we could not go for uh, the individual negotiation in case of the contracting parties that means the pollutant and the victims we could not make if the numbers are large uh, and practically also it will not be it, it could not be possible because one single person could not able to make various dimensions of contract between uh the various uh, victims or the various uh, uh, third parties and secondly so we have to be strong strongly uh, believe that the contract or the negotiation can will happen between the uh, uh, very small uh, uh, parties maybe one to one one to two one to three like that and secondly the cost of negotiating by the interested parties is also small 
uh, since it is a very big amount of cause and effect is happening on the externality. Uh, uh, suppose I'm having uh, uh, atomic energy or uh, the nuclear power plant. Uh, because of this atomic energy and nuclear power plants, uh, that will create uh, 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 the, the cost of negotiating or uh, the damage to the, uh, the third party will become uh, very huge. So in such case, the, the negotiation will not work in case if it is a small damage happens, sir, uh, uh, one agriculture land or piece of one acre land is damaged so that we can able to give some two lakhs rupees as compensation so that the negotiation will be so clear between the two individuals. There is no requirement of the government to involve. But in case if it is a huge amount of cost involved in the negotiation, it is not possible to uh, uh, apply the cost theorem so that we have to mention or we have to assume that there is a small interested parties will be uh, uh, incorporated in this cost theorem or negotiating uh, 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 issues. And third one, there are no transaction cost. Uh, we have to mention that there is no transaction cost. Transaction cost means there is no uh, the additional cost which is involved between the two peoples uh, for uh, either uh, if somebody is incurring some externalities because of the externalities when they are coming for the negotiation, uh, there won't be any transaction cost. In case if there is any transaction cost is happening, that means uh, the transaction cost for uh, uh, for uh, mutual understanding, the cost may be occurs for uh, dialogues or the cost may be occurs due to uh, the short term uh, clearance of the damage or uh, short term support we need to provide them for the damage. That's all will not happen. That's all will happen when it will happen in case of the requirement of the government intervention. So that uh, there may be separate uh, government fees has also be paid by the pollutant and the norms has to be followed. That is various uh, transaction cost will involve in the, uh, the other parameters. But whereas in the post theorem for negotiation, there is no cost transaction cost is involved and there are no income or wealth effects. So because of applying, because of this uh, uh, post theorem or applying the negotiation, is there is any uh, changes will happen on the a generation of income or any changes in the uh, 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 value of wealth, no, nothing will happen. It is all kept constant. And there is no government intervention. As we all know, uh, as suggested by Professor Coase, uh, in the first theory, in the first uh, theory, uh, when we apply the Coase theorem, we don't require uh, any government intervention because that is the major objective. We don't want to go for the government intervention within our uh, uh, community itself, within one-to-one -one itself, we can be able to uh, uh, solve the problem of externality. So externality can be solved through individual and also individual by uh, negotiation, and it can also possible to solve externality problems can be resolved through the government intervention. So first theorem and the second theorem. In the first theorem, we don't require government intervention. And next, we'll move on to the, how we are going to analyze the theory. Yes, uh, this is the, uh, the, we are going to analyze uh, or apply post uh, property rights negotiation theorem um, or we are going to apply this theorem to solve the externality problem. Here we are going to take the example of uh, two parties. One party is the cattle who is holding the cattle uh, they are having so much of uh, uh, animals, cows for uh, their business. And second individual, 
I mean, because the two individuals, two parties are involved in this analysis. Second party is the wheat manufacturer. I mean, I mean uh, the wheat uh, uh, producing farmer. Wheat cultivation is happening with uh, another person, uh, another party. Both the parties are neighbors. Uh, students, you are following with me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So both the parties are uh, uh, neighbors in the village. Now, uh, one party, the main party is, uh, I mean, the pollutant. Who is the pollutant here? Pollutant in the sense, we are taking an example of some externalities happening uh, uh, because of his production. Uh, I mean, the cap, uh, cattle user production, cattle production, it is going to affect the, the production or output of wheat, wheat cultivator. In this manner, we are explaining the externality because of a person A is uh, production, increase in production will lead to affect the, the, uh, the level of production by the third party. So externalities is happening. So how this cattle production or the cattle expansion uh, will lead to the damage of wheat. Since both are neighbors, when, when we are increasing, I am the cattle producer, I mean the cattle uh, uh, owner, so I am increasing the numbers. So what will happen in between my land and the uh, wheat cultivator land, there is no fencing. So because of the non-availability of the fencing, all my cows will go there. In case if it is a limited in number, only I have five or six, I can able to manage uh, by not going out of my land. Suppose when I'm intended to increase the numbers so that uh, sub suppose uh, from five to 25 I increase, I could not be able to manage within my land. It will go beyond my level, reach, uh, it will go beyond the boundary of my land and it will go to the next land and it will eat the wheat grass. So once the wheat grass is eaten, then that will affect the productivity of the wheat. So for this problem, what is the solution? Course is suggesting to apply the uh, first theorem. Uh, so the property of the second person is the wheat manufacturing or I mean the wheat, wheat productivity. So to that is the, his property. His property is being damaged by the expansion of cattle property. I mean the number of uh, the first producers cattle owner property. So both us both are having the properties their own rights. In this, both are claiming I am increasing my cattle size and it is coming to your land and it is eating wheat grass and it is damaging yours. So what I can do? And secondly, the third party this is your cattle coming into my land and it is eating my grass and because of my property is getting losses. Now, by applying the theory one, uh, to control this uh, externality problem, we have to put one fencing there in between the land one and land two, between the uh, 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 wheat, wheat and the cattle. From these two land between we have between we have to put a uh, fencing. Okay, sir. Who will bear the fencing cost? Who has to bear the fencing cost? So both of them can share. Okay. The, the owner of the cat, uh, the field has to bear the owner of the wheat cultivation land or the cattle land 
wheat cultivation wheat cultivator sachin and sanjay wheat cultivation suppose it cost 10000 rupees to construct the uh, fencing jomol is saying both are can divide 5000 5000 sachin is saying the cat uh, wheat manufacturer because they want to protect their property they have to put the fencing sanjay also same right any other views yes please no other views anirjit yes sir yes what sir, is sir uh, i also feel the owner of the uh, wheat cultivator has to be at okay fine so now uh, with this feedback first we will uh, take the jomol's uh, perception both have to take 50 50% now uh, we are uh, the um, wheat uh, cultivation uh, owner he is saying uh, to the next person sir your cattle is coming to my land and it is eating the grasses it will be damage my property so that uh, we'll put a fencing 10000 rupees cost will occur so 5000 rupees i will pay 5000 rupees you will give this cattle person is asking if you want to protect your property you have to spend you have to use your marginal cost to protect your property then he is saying sir if i am using marginal cost of because the marginal cost means already he used some 50 uh, 1 lakh rupees on the manufacturing on the uh, cultivation of farm land or cultivation of this uh, wheat uh, and further he has to spend 10000 rupees what is it cost addition cost what we we'll call in economics marginal cost yes so when i am using this marginal cost what will be the effect on my output additional cost if i incurring it has to reflect on the on the output sir on the output if the output increases by double the money of if i am spending the marginal cost suppose marginal cost i am spending 10000 rupees it has to double means it is an increasing returns to scale if it is at least 10000 rupees i am spending 10000 rupees additional i am getting it is an a uh, constant returns to scale i am i will reach but i will spend 10 if i spend 10000 rupees on fencing will i get any additional output from my wheat cultivation no sir no because it is not used for the process of production it has been used for the unnecessary uh, use an unproductive thing so that i can able to only protect from losses that marginal cost will not be helpful or it is not productive so that why should i use this marginal cost and if if i if the wheat manufacturer asking the cattle producer cattle uh, uh, keeper cattle catalyst that 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 man he is saying if that in same way when i increase my marginal cost it has to reflect on increasing my level of uh, uh, the size of the cattle so that for me also it, that marginal cost will not used for me me to uh, uh, take over so that the problem arise so to solve this problem we have to go for the solution so solve this externality issue we have to use the coase theorem and what coase is suggesting uh, instead of instead of going for fencing suppose if we go for fencing then we can stop but who has to bear the marginal cost that is a problem 
and the another way what we can go for is the mutual understanding of between the two instead of expansion of the cattle and uh, normally you have some 10 to 15 cattle no that will be fine for your thing when you expand the size to 20 30 only it will come to my land and it is eating the grass in case if you uh, 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 stop the uh, uh, size of the cattle i mean you get if you restrict the size of the cattle, uh, cattle so that it won't affect my uh, uh, productivity and uh, to stop this kind of thing if i want to spend on as a uh, um, wheat producer in case if i want to stop this one uh, if i fight with you you will keep on increase your capital uh, cattle size and I, I i have no other go i have to put the fencing in my land so if i put the fen fencing that will cost me more almost to some 10 to 20 percent extra that doesn't give any level of output to my uh, uh, this one instead of that i will give you some amount of compensation for you so that you can stop the expansion of your cattle so that i can reduce the my cost to the least level and you can also control your cattle size according to your uh, 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 available land size so that in between both of them we can able to have a uh, you will also get some amount of incentive because when you increase the cattle size i have to lose some amount of uh, uh, productivity suppose some 10 to 20 percent or 30 percent uh, the output will be reduced so from that i'll give you some amount of incentive for your loss and i'll also protect it from the loss so both of us we can able to minimize the uh, externality of one's action so if you are acting for expansion of cattle size it will affect a huge in my productivity. If you control your, uh, limit your expansion or limit your uh, the cattle size, then I can able to uh, uh, get, I can able to avoid the loss of uh, productivity. From that avoiding of loss of productivity, I can bear some incentive to you. I can give some incentive to you so that both will have the mutual understanding, the negotiation will work out. In this manner, we are going to apply this and represent with the help of Hossian property rights with this diagrammatic explanation. In this diagrammatic representation, we have X axis and Y axis. In this x axis, we have the cattle per year. I mean, uh, every year, we are uh, how much the cattle we are uh, uh, using, and on the y axis, we are using the damage. And this damage is the price or the amount of damage incurred to the third party, or uh, because of this size of the capital, so I mean, size of the cattle the externality happened to the third party. Cattle of an individual, damage of the third party. On the x-axis, we are using cattle per year. Suppose this year, uh, this is the, uh, uh, we have two segment of production function here. I request all of you to put your good attention over here. Here we are using to production function that is why this msc uh, mc that is uh, cost uh, the marginal social cost and the marginal cost is available for both the uh, production now we will start with the first cattle function now this upward line is the mc marginal cost of cattle production, I mean the cattle per year. And this 
horizontal line either we can call it as the price line of the cattle or we can also call it as a demand line of cattle that consists of the, this line which consists of marginal revenue of cattle is equal to average revenue of that cattle we all know in our perfectly competitive market demand is equal to ar is equal to mr that rule you know right yes sir fine so with this understanding we come to a point where l1 is the equilibrium point between mc is equal to mr mc is equal to mr mc of quartal and mr mr is of quartal where it intersect there the price of the commodity has been attained and at this price at this price damage will uh, will come to uh, the next this is the first the production process and at this price the cattle is so happy because they are getting the uh, very good prices for their cattle so that they are happy to produce oq one of higher a uh, size of the cattle the size of the cattle they increase like anything because they got a better value of or returns now now because of this activity the wheat producer what is happening and what is the damage is happening for the wheat producer and msc msc is the marginal social cost of the wheat manufacturer one i mean the wheat manufacturer i mean wheat, wheat producer and this is the price of wheat w1 with the existing condition where if the equilibrium between mc is equal to mr for the producer of cattle at this juncture they are having the very good size of the cattle and because of this the marginal social cost or the externality cost has been uh, 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 has been uh, adopted by the wheat producer at ow1 so the damage is attained at this level now we need to control by, by applying this is a scenario first step what we are seeing is a scenario because of this scenario uh, the cattle producer is expanded his size of the activity so that the output has been increased that leads to damaging of wheat producer so that wheat producer has to uh, loss some amount of properties now the course uh, mutual understanding negotiation is going to happen because of the uh, the uh, the negotiation now we are going to come for the common solution the marginal cost if you see the marginal cost of uh the cattle see this line was the previous marginal cost of the cattle now as i told in the theoretical perspective uh, the wheat manufacturer wheat producer is negotiating i will give some amount of incentive so that you try to reduce the or you restrict the limit the your cattle size if he wants to minimize or restrict the cap, uh, cattle size then he has to reduce the marginal cost because when marginal cost is keep on increasing only his output will increase in the cattle cattle so that the marginal cost mc of cattle will shift backward to a new line with this and with this new line the mc 
C, that marginal cost of C plus O W one, O W one, O W one is the uh, the damage incurred by uh, but, uh, the wheat O W. If you put together M C C plus O W one, O W one is this area. This area or this area, this difference, and M C C is the this area. This area together, when we check, we can able to get these two. If you add this area and this area, so the difference will be reached here at point L two. At point L two. Or we can also say this is line is the summation of uh, the uh, wheat manufacturer cost and marginal cost and the the cattle uh, marginal cost, so that we will have a common line, and this common line will have the intersection of equilibrium at point L two with this L two. With the existing demand line or MR line or AR line of cattle manufacturer, here now MR is equal to MC of the cattle producer. The equilibrium point will connect the cattle size, so the cattle size has been restricted from Q1 to Q2. Q1 to Q2. So the restriction has been taken place because of this restriction. The problem of externality can be solved. How the problem of externality can be solved? Because now the marginal social cost, marginal social cost of the wheat previously it was at this level, MC, MSC. But now the marginal cost has been reduced at this level, and this marginal cost has been used to provide the incentive for the uh, the producer of cattle because the cattle producer has got two benefit now. Both are mutually benefited. Uh, the uh, Ma, uh, the first we will take the, what is the benefit of uh, happened with respect to the uh, catalyst. Previously, the cattle producer has to use a huge amount of marginal cost to get the output. Now they are saving so much of cost, and they are producing very less only. But the, their marginal cost has been saved. Secondly, for this. Um, the, this quantity of sacrifice in output expansion can be uh, uh, given as an incentive without incurring any kind of cost, without incurring any kind of economic activity. The uh, person two, the third party, they are giving some amount of incentive. What they are previously lost O O W one. Now they are getting one. They are losing only this amount, and this amount has been paid to them for uh, the uh, the what is the loss of uh, expansion or the uh, just not to expand the cattle. They are providing the incentive. So with this, at L two will be the an optimum production point where. Both the parties will not affect, and both the parties' marginal cost will be reduced. Because if you see the marginal social cost of W one, in in case if they are expanding like this, L one they have to spend a huge amount of MSC, that is the fencing cost at this point, and now they are spending only this level because they are not expanding the. Their cattle size, because of this mutual understanding by using the cost theorem, so that 
the properties of an individual the damage of the properties of an individual the externality issue of an a third party can be minimized can be minimized the following students yes yes sir, yes, sir. okay so in this process we have some key uh, takeouts i'll just summarize the key takeouts from one, uh, from first point to the last point first point uh, under the uh, post property rights theory hosian property theory there are two individuals are engaged in the uh, mutual understanding or negotiation secondly there is no transaction cost and third one the size should be minimum and fourth one uh, the negotiation parties uh, uh, will not have any government intervention by keeping this one we are going to take the examples of cattle manufacturing and wheat manufacture wheat production because of the expansion in uh, expansion of uh, a cattle size it will affect the it will it will uh, uh, resulted in externality or it will affect the third party such as namely the uh, uh, wheat producer and wheat producer now is coming forward to have a talk with or negotiation with the uh, cattle holder uh, instead of increasing your size of the cattle you restrict your size of the cattle so that i will not get any damages from my end otherwise we have to go if we go for uh, the construction of the fencing uh, yes you you will not agree to give any money for the fencing even i could not able to afford to put fencing because that will not give any big output changes in my production so that i will give some amount of incentives because i can able to reduce the loss of my or i can able to reduce the marginal social cost of producing the wheat from a greater amount to very less amount in case if you try to restrict your cattle size and i can also give you some amount of incentive for you for uh, not disturbing or not damaging my property so that the mutual understanding between uh, uh, person a and the third party can be achieved so that uh, we can able to mutually understand and go for the appropriate optimum output of both cattle and wheat this is what will happen in the first stage in the when we move on to the second stage i mean the second theorem why the necessity of the second theorem i'll ask you one question uh suppose i am the wheat producer you are uh, the cattle uh, holder now i am asking you to come for uh, such kind of uh, uh, mutual understanding talk will you be agree that to limit the production by from your end and accepting a small amount of incentive for avoiding the expansion no sir yes so in practice nobody will uh, accept to limit their expansion we always have our own aim objective to enhance our output so what we can do to uh, expand the output or how uh, we i don't want to come for this kind of mutual understanding then the uh, 
um, the a wheat producer has to think in a different dimension because even he don't want to lose his productivity so what he can do he has to go for the second theorem the second theorem will continue in the next class next class also i am taking will continue and we'll discuss thank you so much we'll continue in the next thank class you, thank, thank you sir. sir thank you